July, it's October, and this month our focus is on mark making, the individuality of each of the marks we make. And um, it's so interesting for me as an instructor to be in a classroom where everyone, for instance, is carving stamps from plastic erasers. How different each of the patterns is, even though the elements, the square, the circle, the spiral, are so very similar. In this case, we're talking about a completely different kind of tool, and the tool itself can become one of your signatures when it comes to the marks that you make. So what we're going to be doing is making brushes out of all kinds of unexpected materials. So this is, as is often true when we're shaping the month at hand, um, I'm looking for things that are really fun to do that anybody can, can jump right into, but also the sort of an object that you can use that will um, give you something to think about and help perhaps to develop some sort of a daily practice. And as we saw with the botanical prints, there we were all over the map. People were getting all kinds of results, and it's especially fun when people start sharing all of those. I know some of you are working in groups and sharing and working together there. Um, if anything, I wish I had a little movie camera dropped into each person's studio so I could check in and see what you're working on at any given time. So in order to do this, which was actually inspired by two things, um, several years ago I went to a conference, and at the conference there were all these vendors, and there was an amazing woman from Japan who had these incredible brushes that had wooden uh, driftwood handles and the most interesting kinds of bristles, and this was actually an art form. And I've got several of those, which Zena will photograph and put up for you this month to see. But then, as I was researching this idea of making our own brushes from unexpected materials, I ran across a photo of about 50 brushes that this artist had made out of exactly what we're doing here. They were all lined up, staggered, beautiful, beautiful display, and they were as interesting as objects, there's one I made, as they were the, the, as was their ability to actually create an interesting texture or an interesting mark. And so um, that, that's one of the things that inspired this too. But it's also kind of a cool way to repurpose, and frequently these projects that we come up with are especially attractive, I think, at least to us on this end of the camera, because they involve some form of repurposing. And as you see, as I go through my little demo here, um, hardly anything is uh, not a candidate. So, here's what you need to get started. Sticks are good. I have a variety of sticks that I've been picking up, and I especially love sticks like this with the prongs. And this is very appealing because of the shape. This is a uh, cedar from outside. I picked it up in Zena's yard this morning. And this one has an interesting weathered quality. If you live near the beach, it could be driftwood. If you live in the woods or you have a garden, you've probably got a ready-made stock. And if you live in some urban environment, as would be true of us here in Texas, then a walk down the street might be a scavenger hunt, and that would be fun. As far as the bristles are concerned, anything goes. I have some string, and I think I might make one. And I think this morning as a demo, I'm going to use this twine. And then I have this wonderful sort of burlap roll, and this can be cut and rolled up. We're going to play around with that a little bit. And in one of my daily walks, I picked up a lot of uh, feathers. This signals some sort of tragedy on some front, I'm afraid. But the possibility of using these might be something that would honor the, the dove. And I actually made this little brush out of rubber bands. It's not one of the more interesting brushes that I made, but who knows what that's going to make when we get to the mark making part. And that's part of the excitement of this, is that it's fun to make the tool, but it's equally fun to imagine what the tool might do and then to have a chance to try it out. So let's work on a couple of these. Some of the other things I need, by the way, are a needle that has an eye large enough to accommodate some sort of a thread. If I want to put this twine through that needle, I think, yeah, that, that'll work all right. You need to be able to do this because at the end you're going to thread the thread back through the, the handle or back through the wrapping that you put on this in order to secure it 
So the needles are good and I have another needle that's small so that if I'm wrapping with a thread like this, it can be accommodated. So kind of a selection of needles is where I'm headed with that piece of advice. And then I did a little bit of uh, enhancement with thread. So this was wrapped with pink pearl cotton, but then I threaded an orange pearl cotton through it to secure the, the thread and to add a little bit of decoration. And let's see, I think I showed you this one already where I used one thread to wrap it and then I used a couple of other colors just because it looked like fun to do that. So that's how we're getting started. If you're using a twine or a thread or some yarn of some kind, you may want to get a piece of cardboard in order to get the, the, the bristle part started. So I cut this and I'm really horrible at measuring. You know that by now about me, but I think that's probably about three inches this way. I'm going to wrap around this and I can just wrap a few or I can wrap and make a really fat, fat set of bristles. I'm going to stop. There we go. That's easier. Okay. I'm going to cut this off and then cut through this end of the wrap that I did. Might want to make it a little bit, not quite as tight as I did it, it might be better. Or, holy cow, I need better scissors. There we go. So you see what that does is create what will eventually be the bristle surface. Now I could just take the string and wrap it tight like that, but I think I'm going to put this one on a, on a stick. So I'm going to pull this apart, put the stick in the middle before I wrap it. Then this is important. You don't want that point of the stick to be even with the bristles or you'll get that rough mark from the stick. So the bristles, that's part of the reason I made them so long. I want the bristles to be down here, you know, about an inch below where the stick is. That gives me plenty of stick and bristle to wrap, but it also gives me plenty of surface to use for the actual painting later. And I brought this, when I come to Zenith Studio, I always have to make some choices in advance. So I brought this sort of a, it's called four ply needlepoint cotton. I'm going to use that. Now, in the tutorial, I mentioned that you could use a, a uh, hot glue gun. And if I were using the hot glue gun, I'd put hot glue along the stick before I put the bristles on. And then when I secured that stick in the middle of the bristles, it, it might be a better hold. I've resisted using the glue gun mainly because I like the idea that these are natural and there isn't anything like that involved in how they were made. But frankly, I might encounter uh, either a set of bristles or a handle where it would really be better if I had that glue gun engaged. So you can add that or not based on your own preference. Now when I get it really securely wrapped, then I'm going to put this end of the thread on the needle and then I'm going to stitch through the wrap that I just did, and not a big whomping stitch, you know, maybe a quarter to a half inch. And I'm going to go all the way around my bundle. Like that. That's, that should secure it pretty well. And if you have to make one more stitch and you've got a really long needle, you can disengage the thread for a minute, put the needle where you want it to go, and then put the thread back through it and pull it through for one more. One more little stitched pass there. Pretty simple, huh? So now I probably want to trim these bristles so they're a little bit more even. And I found that when I actually paint the first time, 
this all sort of smooths out and it makes it, I mean, you're obviously never going to get a sharp tip with any of these. These are more for textural applications. But if I wet this, then I could smooth it down a little bit if, if, if that was desirable. Another thing I can do, because the end of the stick is right here, so that's a good, what, inch and a half? I'm not translating into centimeters, but those of you who are outside the U.S. can see what I'm doing here. Um, I could trim another half inch off of this if I wanted it to be just a little bit, uh, not, not quite so loose and goose, loosey-goosey. But nice, huh? I love that. I love, the, I love the handle as much as I love the mark it's probably going to make. So there's one idea. Um, then this is something I bought with another purpose in mind and it didn't work. So in a case like that, I could, could basically just wrap this with string to hold it in place and dip that and that could become the mark. And another version of that was to take an old piece of quilt and roll the quilt up and then wrap it really tightly with, um, in this case, it's kind of a, a wool, wool thread that I had. I was just using my odds and ends. And so I dip that in the ink and make the mark with that. That made a very interesting sort of mark too. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do this burlap that way. So I'm going to cut two pieces so I have a pretty dense brush. And that's just the best. And then I'm going to pull out some of these threads. And that's what will become the bristles. You could buy a regular piece of burlap and cut it up. You might have some burlap and you wouldn't have to buy anything. This happens to be uh, a roll of some sort of decorative, I don't know, you know, country weddings are so popular right now. I just got it at a craft store. I had another purpose in mind. I can't remember why I bought it, so I'm just using it up. I'm going to peel that apart until I have, and I'm putting two together so it'll be a little bit denser, and then I'm going to roll it this way. Oh, I could put a stick in it if I want, but let's put a, I've got a nice stick. I'll put the stick in it. Make it easier to roll. So I'm going to roll that up, and then this will require wrapping. We'll keep the theme going with this. needlepoint. Thread that I had. So I, the, if there's anything about this whole process that's important, it's that you keep these wraps as tight as possible. So that it won't come off of the stick or the handle. And I, I could, I suppose, have put either hot glue or E6000 or some other adhesive. I could have put it along the stick before I started rolling, wrapping, rolling up the, uh, the burlap fabric. So I think in this case, maybe I wouldn't have to wrap it clear to the end, but I'm going to go as far as I can so it doesn't come undone. Maybe I'll stop right there. Go back the other direction so I can fill in my gaps, mainly because it just looks nicer. And then the basic strategy is the same one I used before. Take the needle and sew back through. Whoop. Back through the bundle. Now, in addition to using an interesting thread to do the wrapping, you could also. As I said a minute ago, you could embroider back over this if you wanted to. Making these is, it's good, isn't it? When making it, the tool is part of the pleasure. 
I love the idea of that. I think I'm just going to knot this since it's separated into the four ply. I'm going to knot that and just leave that thread out. You know, I could put some beads on the thread if I really wanted to. You could go kind of crazy here, just decorating. Wouldn't, that might be kind of a cool gift, you know. I think if I got a brush like that and a little India ink and a pad of paper as a gift, I might really enjoy that as a gift. So think about those people you know who need a little creative whack. And I'm going to trim these off, these threads that are sticking up. And if I had a little bit more time and I wasn't just demoing, I well, here I am trimming it really close anyhow. But you get the idea. Okay, so there's one. Let's just try these feathers and make one more quick one with those. So... This is definitely, as is, well, it's true of all of this, isn't it? It's all kind of experimental. Um, I think I'm going to leave out the stick, at least for the time being, because since these uh, spines of the feathers, there's a term for that, I can't think what it is right now. Anyway, they're a lot bigger around than the, the, the threads I've been using, and I'm afraid that I couldn't get it tight enough. So you have to use your own judgment with that. And, I might use a rubber band, but that it's, rubber bands aren't thrilling me right now. So I'm just going to... Oops. Too late. Wrap that really tight that way. Actually, you know, those make kind of an interesting end to it that I wasn't anticipating. And since I have this thread hanging down, the one that I started with, I can finish this by tying these two together tightly instead of stitching through the, through the bundle. And it's better if that's cut a little bit tighter. Well, if I need anything today, I think I need somebody who sharpens scissors. So there we go. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what kind of mark that makes. Now, I couldn't let you go without experimenting a little bit just to see what kinds of marks some of these make. And I have some watercolor paper right here. Wouldn't have to be watercolor paper. I'm going to put some examples up on the website as part of the monthly offering that are big pieces of newsprint that I played with when I first started making these, when I was comparing what the marks looked like, so you'll have a chance to see what those look like. But let's try the brushes that I just made. So I'm using India ink, but you could use anything. Wow, I'm loving this. So every, every sort of brush that you make is going to make a different mark. So let's put that down. Uh, let's see, put it on the cardboard so I don't get it on Zen's table. And let's try the end of this. Even though I didn't wrap this, I'm really curious about what the mark will look like. How about that? Not what I expected at all. This would make a fabulous Thermofax. Whoa, I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, and then we have to try the feathers. And by the way, um, these brushes would wash out just like any other brush. A lot of the ones that I use, because I've mainly been sticking to uh, the India ink, because I had kind of a collage thing in mind, um, the ink washed out, but it did stain them a little bit. So if you're in love with how your brushes look, and you don't want, I don't know, the black tips, there's nothing wrong with that. They're brushes, they're functional. But here's one I made out of um, an old piece of lace that was damaged, and that makes a really swash, 
sort of swishy cool mark. As for the feathers, huh, a little bit like birds in flight, that pattern, which wasn't intentional. So, let's see, I've got a look. Oh, let's try the rubber bands. This might be kind of goofy, but. That's nice. So, I guess this is the adult version of finger painting in some way, isn't it? That's kind of cool too. So, I could play here in front of the camera for a pretty long time and be totally entertained, but I think it's your turn. So make yourself some interesting creative brushes. Send us pictures of your brushes and the marks that they make. And let's uh, see how many we can accumulate. And let's talk about how much fun it is, because that's really the whole point of, of these creative explorations, is the deep sense of uh, pleasure that comes from playing around with these unexpected materials.